Ryzen CPUs were launched back in 2017 and brought us a new architecture, which included an evolution of the Hyper Transport called Infinity Fabric. The same Infinity Fabric's frequency is directly connected to your RAM frequency. Imagine you have DDR3200. DDR is an acronym for Double Data Rate, which means that your RAM's true frequency is in fact 1600 MHz. In all Ryzen CPUs, the Infinity Fabric will operate at half your RAM frequency, or like said before, your RAM's true frequency, so the ratio would be 1-1. This means that higher RAM speed is always beneficial for better Infinity Fabric speed. Although, first and second generation CPUs had a limit, where you couldn't simply raise the frequency after a certain point, due to the weaker IMC. 3rd gen brought us the ability to use RAM frequencies as high as 5000 MHz. But it has a catch. As soon as you go over 3800 MHz, the Infinity Fabric will decouple and will be half of your RAM's true frequency. So having 5000 MHz would actually mean that your Infinity Fabric's frequency would be 1250 MHz instead of 2500 MHz, making it way lower than when using 3800 MHz RAM, for example. And well, now that you know the basics, let's move on. Hello guys, it's Game Plays. I'm Fabio Pisco, and welcome to my channel. And well, now that you know the basics about the Infinity Fabric, if you want to see more frequencies tested, and with FCLK overclock on and off, FCLK is the Infinity Fabric, you, you want to watch this video because this video explains it really, really well and has frequencies that are not presented in this video. So watch it, the link is in the description. For this video I tried to use the FCLK, the Infinity Fabric Speed, uh, overclocked to 1900 MHz. Well, it happens that on the latest BIOS, my motherboard forces the mode to auto instead of my overclock. So imagine if I use 3200 MHz RAMs, it will use the Infinity Fabric at 1600 MHz. It doesn't enable the overclock. I don't know why, but well, it has to do with the BIOS update. So for this video, the FCLK is on auto. Okay? Yeah. The CPU used is a Ryzen 5 3600 and the GPU used is an RX 5700 XT from Sapphire. As for the RAM kit, I'm using a Patriot Viper 4400 MHz CL19. Of course, Samsung Bidai. We're gonna test several games, for example Red Dead Redemption 2, yes, at several frequencies like you've seen, so uh, 3200 CL14, 3600 CL16, 3800 CL16, 3800 CL16 with improved timings and sub timings, so 16, 15, 14, 14, 28, yes, and 4266 MHz at CL18. So without any further delays, let's find out the results. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot. And see you in the conclusion. Well, today's first game is Far Cry New Dawn, which is clearly known to like CPU power and low latencies. And well, that can be clearly seen here. 3200 MHz CL14 will give us a bit better results than 3600 MHz CL16 due to the lower latencies. As for 3800 MHz, it is clearly superior in this game, even more with improved sub-timings. Not that much on average, but mainly on the 1% lows where the difference is bigger percentage-wise. 
Once we go over 3800 MHz, the Infinity Fabric decouples and its frequency will be half your true RAM frequency instead of being equal to it. Hence, the 4266 MHz results. Did you hear me the first time? The second game is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and once again we see that 3800 MHz brings superior results. Those results can be further improved by tuning the timings and sub-timings. Not a huge difference, but well, it is free performance, so why not? This time 3600 MHz CL16 is actually a bit better than 3200 CL14, but the difference is almost inexistent. So in this game, everything besides 3800 MHz performs virtually the same, being it 1080p, 1440p or 4K. Now with the PUBG Replay feature. Well, this test doesn't include 3800 MHz with improved timings and sub-timings because PUBG had to push a game update of 11 GB that made my replay obsolete and unable to test. Sad. Really sad. But well, as for the results, we once again state that 3200 MHz CL14 is superior to 3600 MHz CL16 and that can be seen mostly on the 1% lows. 3800 MHz is still the alpha dog, but funny enough, at 1440p, 4266 MHz have better 1% lows than 3200 and 3600 MHz. But since the replay feature is not 100% trustable, well, take this with a grain of salt. Now with a competitive game that needs a lot of FPS for the sake of measuring who has the biggest ding dong, CSGO. Well, CSGO has some interesting and strange results. At 1080p and 4K, 3200 MHz CL14 has better results than 3600 MHz CL16, but at 1440p the results were actually the same. I guess something went wrong in that test, I guess. As for 3800 MHz, it is still the frequency giving the best results, even better with tinkered timings. I was surprised that 4266 MHz results were this high, considering that CSGO loves low latency and the latency is actually higher at 4266 MHz due to the Infinity Fabric decoupling. Overall, all frequencies are more than enough, delivering more than 300 ever average FPS, sorry, <laughs> in all resolutions. Let's move on.
now with another vastly played title, Rainbow Six Siege. This game is pretty GPU sided, so after 1080p, even with my RX 5700 XT, it will be GPU bottlenecked by a good percentage, hence the results being so close at higher resolutions. At 1080p medium settings though, we can see that the timings matter a lot for this game, since 3200MHz CL14 is considerably faster than 3600MHz CL16 by 8fps. Still, it is a meaningless result if we look at it percentage-wise once again. The biggest jump is noticed once we use 3800MHz with improved timings and subtimings, but the difference is quickly turned to zero once we go up in the resolution or simply increase the settings to high or ultra. So yeah, meaningless. Moving on. Now with Red Dead Redemption 2. This video was actually delayed one day due to testing this game, still it seems that the results are all over the place. These results are the ones given by the benchmark tool itself and as can be seen the 0.1% lows are all over the place and not at all an indication of real world performance. That is why I usually use only 1% lows instead of the 0.1%. But well, even looking at the averages, we can see that the results are all within the margin of error. This is of course because the game's using Vulkan API and the stress is all towards the GPU. So changing the frequency and timings really don't affect much in this case. But well, it is always good to know. Let's move on. Now with the gameplay test of Need for Speed Heat in the resort circuit. Well, the results speak for themselves. At 1080p, strangely, even 4266MHz had similar results to other frequencies, being the only different value 3800MHz test with improved timings and sub-timings. At 1440p, the results are the same, even though we are GPU bottleneck there, we can see the tendency is the same, mostly in the 1% lows. At 4K, the average was a bit lower, but the 1% lows value was also a bit higher. Overall, since this is a gameplay and not a benchmark test, the margin of error might be a bit bigger, but still, the results are pretty explanatory. Father will kill me if he finds out I went up with you. Twice if he learns we've been to a hunter off limit zone. The last game tested today is Metro Exodus on Moscow's first mission. In this game we can finally see some infinity fabric working, and we can clearly see that the results are quite lower using frequencies over 3800 MHz. In this case 4266. The difference is not that big in average numbers, but instead in the 1% lows, where we have 130 FPS with 3800MHz versus 108.7 with 4266MHz, so the higher frequency actually gives 21 FPS less than the lower one. Interesting, huh? At 1440p and 4K we get into a GPU bottleneck but we can still see that 4266MHz is clearly slower, even on a full GPU bottleneck state. <laughs> Let's go to the conclusion now. So guys, after watching the results, what do you think of the results, of course? So it is really worth to buy higher speed, higher frequency RAMs 
Is it really worth or not? Oh, j just by, for example, 3200 MHz RAMs, 3200 MHz CL6, in which are the most inexpensive RAMs you can get right now, and it performs pretty decently. Of course, it is not tested on this video, but the difference, be the difference between CL16 and CL14 in gaming, in overall gaming, is not that much. Mostly because you will be GPU bottlenecked on the ideal gaming scenario, so yeah, even less difference from the timing. So, what I mean is, in my opinion, it isn't really worth, it isn't really worth. If you are using a Ryzen first generation, or even the second one, but mostly the first generation, well, it is worth, it is worth to expand a bit more, because Ryzen first generation is a lot more timing sensitive, timing and frequency sensitive, so imagine if you are using um, a Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 7 1700, using indeed Samsung Bidai to reach for example 3400 MHz with really tight timings will indeed improve the performance of the, um, the gaming performance of the, the CPU by a lot by a lot mostly on the first generation. Not that much on the second, but it, it has still a decent, a decent boost. As for the third generation, well, it cares even less about RAM frequency and RAM timings, okay? It does care. I'm not saying it doesn't care, it does care. And if, for example, if you are going for 2666 megahertz RAMs, or RAM, I keep saying RAMs because we say RAMs in Portuguese, so whatever. What I mean is, if you are going for lower speed RAM, for example, 2666 or 2400, just don't do it. But let's say 3000 MHz, 3200 MHz is completely, completely fine for Ryzen 3rd generation, and you actually don't need more. Just Grab that money, you don't need to expend on a higher RAM kit, higher frequency RAM kit. Grab that money and buy, for example, an SSD or buy a better GPU. You will benefit more for a from a better GPU than from the higher frequency RAM. Overall, it will help a bit on, in some scenarios for the third generation, but not that much. After you go over 3800 MHz, the Infinity Fabric decouples, on the third generation, of course, the Infinity Fabric decouples and goes to half speed of your true DDR frequency, okay? True RAM frequency, so it actually gets worse if you go over 3800 MHz. So stay at 3800 MHz max and reduce the timings as low as you can because that is the best case scenario you can have in terms of RAM frequency and timings. I mean, in RAM performance. At 3800 MHz you'll have the Infinity Fabric at 1900 MHz and then you tighten the timings as much as possible and you get the best results possible, okay? If you go over that, well, at least go to 5000 MHz with the tightest timings you can get and I still doubt, and I still doubt that you get better results than 3800 MHz. But well, it is just a matter of testing. Sorry for not being so energetic guys, but it's like one and a half a.m. and I'm pretty tired. Uh, I'm recording these on the 24th day of December, so uh, the video will be released on the 25th. So Merry Christmas to every, every single one of you and thanks a lot for watching this channel and watching my videos. Uh, and I'm pretty tired, that, that's why I'm not so energetic and I really don't want to make that much noise because people are sleeping here. <laughs> Um, but well, one more time, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video, comment on the comment section and let me, let me know, <laughs> and let me know what you think about this video and what you think about the results. Tell me what you think about the results mostly because I want to know your opinion. One more time, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.